everyone, it's Wendy from The Running Stitch and today we're going to take a look at a traditional technique in the English paper piece hexagons. This is a traditional quilt that was all done by hand. Absolutely beautiful. These hexagons have become back into uh, fashion or in vogue. You see them everywhere. They're in modern quilts. There's a number of different ways to do them and put them together. I'm going to show you how to do them on the sewing machine with the aid of the embroidery as well as the computer software and the cut work tool from Bernita. So we'll move on to the computer and you can see how this is done. With the traditional English paper piecing, you have a paper piece. This one is freezer paper template and as well as your shape in the fabric piece as well. So the template and the fabric pieces are half an inch difference between the two. So the fabric is going to be half an inch larger than the template. Using the Cutwork design software and design works, we're going to create both these files in a two-step process. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new file in Bernina Design Works and we're just going to select that we're going to be using cotton fabric. We will select the hoop that we're going to have inside of our machine as well as the foot that we're going to be using to, in this case, cut out our pieces. On my canvas, I'm going to select that I want to draw a shape. So I'm going to select my polygon shape and I've already predetermined that it's going to be a six-sided shape. So I'm going to place it inside the hoop. I'm not really concerned about the size or placement of it right at the moment. So once I have the hexagon placed inside, I'm going to go back to my selection tool, select it, and here I have a number of options. So I want my hexagons to finish at two inches. So I'm going to change my width to two and we're already using a um, metric, um, a measurement of inches, not um, centimeters or any other. I'm going to select that it's going to be cut work in the object properties. And I'm going to say that it has a fill of none. So this way I'm just going to have one separate piece that is going to be cut inside of the hoop. So now that I have it the right size, I'm just going to position it in the hoop. And of course I'm going to be able to do more than one of my freezer paper pieces at a time. So I'm just going to duplicate this one and then move it over and I'm going to keep doing this until my total hoop space has already been taken up. You'll notice that there is a buffer space between the edge of the hoop and the area where I can place the pieces. This is be determined by the foot that I'm using. For the cut work tool, I'm using the number 44 C foot, which has a large disc on the bottom that keeps the fabric and the paper flat. So in that case, I have to make sure that the foot is not going to bang against the side of the hoop and that's this buffer has already been placed in there so I don't have to worry about that when it goes over to the machine. Once you have them positioned where you would like them to be, you can group them together if I use the right hand menu I can combine them. By combining them all into one design what will happen is each time the blade goes through it would do it will cut all of the angles in position one first then move to two then three then four rather than doing each one of these hexagons individually. Once you're happy with your design you can save the file and you can also choose the option to export exporting it is going to turn it into a format that our machine can understand. When you select the export option, you can export it to a USB stick. This would work for the 7 series machines as well as the 8 series machines and the 560 and the 580. 
You can also connect with a universal plug right directly to your Bernina and that would either be a 440 but you can do it on any of the other models as well, the same ones that would take the USB stick. And if you have a deco machine then you can also save it to that format. Now that we have done the file for the paper templates, it's time to do the one for the fabric. As I had mentioned previously, the fabric pieces need to be a half an inch to give you a quarter of inch seam allowance all the way around, larger than the template itself. So again, we're going to do exactly the same process. We're going to create our polygon with six sides. I'm going to go over to the canvas and I'm just going to put in my shape. I'm going to hit the selection tool. This time I'm going to make the file the size of the hexagon two and a half inches and it'll automatically readjust to the appropriate size. You can change the size of your shape either by pulling on your handlebars on the side or just change it up in the properties menu. Exactly the same process. Once I'm happy with my two and a half inches, I'm just going to duplicate that. And then move it down in the hoop. If I have a shape that's a little bit off kilter, and outside of the area that can be stitched, when I go to write it to the machine, it will prompt me immediately and tell me that the design will not fit with the hoop and the foot that I have selected. Do I want to proceed anyway and write to machine? In this case, I'm going to say no, and I'm going to make the adjustments to fix it. The other options are the same as before. Once you have it set up in the hoop the way that they're all going to work so that they all fit and you can cut them all out. This time we're going to cut them out of the fabric. We're going to do exactly the same thing. I will select them all using the right mouse button. I'll combine them and now they're all set to one design and I will send them to the machine. thing over just a little bit. Once your image has been saved, you're ready to bring your USB stick over to the sewing machine and then I'm going to show you how the cut work tool is going to cut the designs out. For the next part of our process, I'm going to take the um, freezer paper to create freezer paper templates to create our hexagon pieces to get them ready for the stitching process. So the first thing we've done is I've loaded three sheets of freezer paper inside the embroidery hoop and I'm going to show you how the cut work tool is going to cut all of those individual pieces out one at a time. Today I'm working with the 750 Quilters Edition machine complete with the embroidery unit and you'll notice that there's a little bit of something that's a little bit different here towards the bottom where our needle would normally be positioned. This is our fabulous cutwork tool and the cutwork tool cuts in four different directions with a little knife. So instead of using a needle and thread, we're going to use this little knife and it's going to cut the template pieces out of the paper. The machine will stop each time the knife position needs to be reset. So similar to doing machine embroidery, every time you have a thread change, the machine would stop, you would change your spool of thread. This time the machine's gonna stop and I'm gonna change the position of the needle. On the screen itself, it shows me right here at the beginning that um, my piece is loaded and I am going to cut in position number one. So I have that position selected on the cut work tool and then I'm just going to hit the button and we're going to go. So we finished cutting position number one 
And here on the screen on the sewing machine, you can see where it has indicated that cut two. So it's ready to move the needle to position number two. So I'm just going to turn the dial till I see the number two inside the little window and then we're ready to go again and I'm going to hit the go button. Now again the machine has stopped. We finished all of the cuts number two so it's time to move on to number three. Same thing. I'm just going to turn the dial until the three appears in the little window and we're ready to go again. And now we've stopped one last time and we're ready to change the needle position to number four and complete the process. So I've taken three of the little templates that we've just currently cut out from the previous stitch out, changing the needle position so you can see where we have all of our templates. The next part of the process to create this is we're going to have to cut our fabric at the same time. So I have different layers of fabric placed inside the hoop. And if you remember, there was a secondary file that we created that made the fabric half an inch larger for those pieces compared to the template. So then that we'll be able to turn our edges under so that we can stitch them out. So for that process, I've loaded the file onto the machine. We're going to be ready to stitch it out. And the same thing, we have to change our... Um, my knife position is still in the same position it was in for the paper template, so I have to move it back to position number one. The fabric template is loaded, and now we are ready to go. The fabric that is inside the machine here has been treated with Best Press. I sprayed Best Press on it twice on both sides to create it some stiffness to give it a nice crisp edge for when we take the pieces out after they've been cut inside the hoop. You can also use a stabilizer, you can use a uh, fusible web if you were doing a raw edge applique. In this instance we didn't put fusible web in there because we want to be able to turn the edges under like traditional English paper piecing and we want to be able to stitch those together with no raw edges. So now we're going to move to position number two and complete the next step. And now we'll do number three and then we'll move on to number four and I'll poke the paper, the fabric out. So now that we have gone through all of the different uh, angles of positions for the knife and it's cut through all of the fabric, we can just take our hand in underneath and then just pop our pieces right out. So now we have our freezer paper template as well as our fabric which is half an inch bigger so that we have our seam allowance ready all the way around. The next step is to sew our pieces together. So I have the first two pieces stitched together and this is our fabric with the freezer paper template inside. I have pressed all of the edges in on the seam allowance and so now I'm just going to take our freezer paper out and so that you can use it again for the next one. Now, if I rip that when I took it out, it's not that big of a deal because I have the file saved in the Cutwork software and I can just make another series of um, templates to use for the next set. So I'm going to find a good position where I like the design of the way the pieces are going to come together. So I think that way might be look a little bit better than uh, this one where the spokes are going in two different directions. The stitch that I'm going to use to put these together, I want to keep the raw edges underneath. So I don't want them exposed. So it's going to be similar to a blind machine stitch applique except that I have to join the two pieces together. On most Bernina machines, the stitch that you're looking for is stitch number 12. In this particular stitch, what we are going to do is um, stitch a little bit on one side and a little bit on the other side. It's called a bridge and it's going to bridge the two pieces together. I'm also going to change the stitch width and length so that I can make it simulate the hand look stitch that you get with the hand done um, English paper piecing. 
One of the uh, concerns that stitchers have when you're piecing these objects together with a small zigzag or this bridge stitch is that you can't use a single stitch plate because the stitch width is too large. So you want to use your regular stitch plate and sometimes depending on how small the stitch is and how small your pieces are and how small the hexagons are in this case, they can get into the, your large uh, wide stitch hole. And so what I've done is I've placed a small piece of um, tear away stabilizer. This is tear easy and I'm just going to position that in underneath and then I can start right on the edge and I don't have to worry about the fabric falling into a place where I would least like it to be. I'm using the number 10 edge stitch foot and using the guide in the center of the foot I'm going to position it so that I have one of my hexagons on one side of the guide and one on the other and that's going to aid in the bridging that stitch number 12 of the two pieces together. So I'm just going to come all the way down to the edge where the two pieces are together. I'm just going to lift it up slightly because the guide's going to push that piece just a little bit. Make sure that stays in line. Again, stopping with needle down. You could pin these together if you're more comfortable with that. Just make sure that you're not running over your pins. So now for my next spot, I'm just going to come to the edge when I think that I'm close. I'm just going to use the needle up down feature in the pressure foot for the, uh, the foot pedal for the Bernina and I'm just going to tap it once and come down and make sure my needle is in the spot where I want. I'm going to give it a bit of a turn. Again the same thing, I'm going to come straight down where I have my pieces on either side of that guide in the center. And I'm going to needle up at the end. Now I'm still connected to the stabilizer, so I'm just going to very gently pull that away and it's not going to pull my stitches and there I have my pieces are together I'll just grab the other piece that I had completed ahead of time so this piece is when the one that we're working on this is the first one that I have completed in the set and it resembles the hand stitched English paper piecing done on machine. So with the aid of the embroidery software I can create any size or any type of shape that I want. I can easily make the fabric pieces a half an inch bigger than the size of the template of the freezer paper and I can punch them all out on with the cut work tool and then stitch them together with the bridge stitch on the sewing machine and the number 10 foot. I hope you enjoyed this segment. This is Wendy from The Running Stitch. You can reach us at www.therunningstitch.ca